Hello and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the Hario Switch Immersion Dripper. We're going to do a bit of an unboxing. We're also going to discuss some of the uh, pros and cons. And we're also going to take a look at how it works um, and exactly what you need to know about this dripper. Alright, so just a quick look at the box. Very standard for Hario. Um, they use like a thicker cardboard uh, just because the uh, switch is made from glass, so they want to make sure that it's all protected. Just lift this tab out. We've got the glass stripper and the switch attached to the glass stripper. This is the O2 size glass stripper, um, and I'll just pop that to the side. We've got 40 paper filters. These are the tabbed ones, so they would be very similar to the uh, bagged hundreds, um, the ones with the tabs on for Hario. I definitely recommend looking into purchasing some higher quality uh, filters from either Hario themselves or Cafec. Uh, we've got plenty to choose from on our website if you're interested. We also have um, a little booklet and this just goes through all of the care, how to use and some cleaning instructions and that's it let's just pop these to the side okay so this is the Hario switch um, it basically consists of two parts we've got the glass stripper and the switch so the way that this works is there's a tiny little ball and depending on the position of this little switch it will allow water to get to enter and not to enter um, hence the switch uh, so it's quite simple, this little rod just uh, mechanically pushes the ball bearing up and down um, and that is the way the valve works. Um, this just kind of sits into place. This is the exact same as a regular V60, uh, glass V60. Um, it doesn't have any base or anything um, and it's got a little ring around the bottom. So yeah, one of the uh, key differences that this V60 has uh, compared to other V60s is it allows you to control exactly when your water flows. That allows you to control whether you're going for a full immersion brew, meaning all of the grounds are in contact with the water um, and almost steeping like a tea, or you're going like a regular V60 where you have this open and you are uh, relying on gravity to pull down the water through your coffee and extract that way, percolation. Um, another method that you can do is you can also uh, produce a style of coffee which is uh, somewhat of a hybrid. So you can do like maybe 20 grams of coffee, pour in your first two pours with the, with the valve closed, letting that kind of steep for a little bit and then going in with um, opening up that valve and going in for that third and final pour. Yeah, so there's a lot of different ways that you could experiment with this. It opens up a lot of uh, new opportunities to play around with just by controlling that variable. And I think it's really interesting uh, once you have that variable to play around with it, how often you do use it. So yeah, as I was talking about before, there are a couple of ways that you can brew with these. You can brew with these like a traditional V60 where you leave it open and pour your water in and it will continuously draw down just like a regular v60 and you'll have great results you can also do a uh, full immersion where you have 15 grams in put in 250 grams of water or mils of water whatever um, and that is at full capacity so that's just one thing to think of i'm used to doing a 20 gram uh, dose and then a 300 gram total brew water so to have the entire capacity at 250 grams, it felt like it was a little bit short, but that's fine. Um, so I've been using 15 gram doses, um, 250 mils of water. At the two minute mark, I let that draw down completely and it brings me to around about the three minute, three minute 30, depending on what coffee, what grind size, etc. Another really cool feature that this Hario Dripper allows you to do um, is in regards to 
flash brew, or a coffee that's brewed hot with less water and poured over ice. A traditional flash brew recipe would look like this. So you use 15 grams of coffee, 150 mils of water, and then 150 mils of ice. Um, and that ice is bypass, so you're using less hot water to brew with to make a concentrate, and then you're pouring that over ice. Now, one issue with this is that because you're using less water to draw down, uh, you need to compensate for that. And what I've been doing is I've been grinding finer, or I've been using uh, different types of filters that have a slower drawdown, like the light roast profile filters from Cafec. Um, so yeah, a really awesome feature that I've been using for my iced coffees is by shutting this switch off, brewing my hot water in the V60, and then because I'm using less water, it doesn't reach that full capacity. Remember, it's only 150 mils. And then at that two minute mark, pressing the switch, drawing down, and um, you don't have any waste. A really nice way of making iced coffee and it means that I don't need to compensate and grind finer or use different types of filters. Now I did a quick side-by-side -side comparison between a regular V60 uh, with 15 grams in. I, I did three pours, so a bloom, um, and then I think it was up to 150 grams of water and then finished it off to about 250. Um, and that came up to about the three minute 18 drawdown. Um, and then I also did a switch V60 and that was a one bloom and then I continued that bloom after 30 second mark up to the 250 mils. I then pressed the switch at two minute mark and that came to a complete drawdown at the three minute 15 seconds. So this one was a touch quicker than the traditional V60 and I used the exact same grind size. It was 20 clicks on the Commandante. Uh, and um, yeah, my results were that the traditional V60 was a lot, it had a lot more acidity to it, but the Hargo Switch had a lot more sweetness. It had a different texture. It was almost, um, it resembled like an AeroPress, but yeah, it definitely had that uh, mouthfeel and um, enhanced body, uh, which, I was surprised about. I was a little bit disappointed to discover that the original V60 had more pronounced acidity, but um, looking back, when I was doing a side-by-side -side comparison, this is such a minute difference. It was uh, it was pretty much insignificant. Um, they were both fantastic coffees, um, but yeah. One more thing that I quickly wanted to touch base on was the price. Um, a lot of people are saying that this is very expensive and at just over $80, it is a little bit expensive. Um, but considering that it is uh, a full glass stripper and you have the benefit of choosing whether you utilize this immersion brewing or just a traditional pour over V60, uh, you really do have that added value. One of the added benefits of this dripper compared to other drippers on the market is that this one utilizes uh, conical filters. So um, all of your origami filters, the Cafec range, the Hario range will all be compatible in this dripper. If you have any questions about this dripper or anything else, uh, feel free to drop a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, uh, check out our others. Um, and uh, give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.